Hemp is a strain of the cannabis sativa plant and was first introduced to the United States in 1606 to make mundane products such as clothing, rope, and lamp fuels. The plant is rich in cannabinoid compounds which can be isolated from the plant material. We are specifically looking at cannabidiol, also known as CBD. Cannabidiol can get you high. It is non-addictive, can be used as a treatment for epilepsy, acne, depression, anxiety, and pain, just to name a few. Cannabidiol is a great alternative for over-the-counter addictive pain meds. Although the industry is relatively new, mindsets are shifting and industries are growing. Hemp has become a novelty and a facet in sustainability due to high crop yields and has the capacity to serve as a treatment for many. Our team is developing a green, large-scale carbon dioxide hemp essential oil extraction system by implementing safer solvents, utilizing renewable feedstocks, and reducing pollution through our closed-loop CO2 system that makes our process release really zero carbon emissions. The first major step in the hemp essential oil plant design is decarboxylation. Decarboxylation is a reaction that uses heat to transform hepacidic compounds into basic active compounds that can be readily processed by our bodies. The reaction is characterized by the release of CO2 due to the removal of a carbon atom from a COOH carboxyl chain. The rate of hemp activation is directly proportional to the concentration of its acidic counterparts in the hemp material. To maximize the concentration of beneficial hemp compounds in the raw material, the trim will be baked for 20 to 45 minutes in a stainless steel oven between 320 and 356 degrees Fahrenheit to activate. Once the activated hemp has exited the oven, it can be sent to the supercritical CO2 extraction unit. Supercritical CO2 extraction is a method that has been extensively used and recognized as a scalable, relatively safe, environmentally friendly, non-flammable, and easy to operate system that obtains oils from botanicals. The extraction process requires the extraction vessel to be charged with liquid CO2, which is then pressurized to 300 bar and raised to 40 degrees Celsius. These conditions allow for the CO2 to reach a supercritical state. In this state, supercritical CO2 behaves like both a liquid and a gas allowing for increased mass transfer interactions that will allow cannabidiol to be extracted from the hemp. Once the biomass is fed into the system and our desired system specifications are met, the extraction begins and a continuous feed of liquid CO2 at 27 liters per minute is fed into the reactor. Thanks to our closed loop system, the CO2 is recycled with minimal introduction of fresh feed required, resulting in no carbon emissions. Using lab scale studies and the broken intact cell model, we were able to determine each 8,500 liter extraction vessel will have a six hour cycle time and yield approximately 600 pounds. After the CO2 has had time to interact with the biomass in the reactor, the extract and the CO2 mixture will move down and out of the extract vessel into three separators in series that will gradually reduce the system pressure from 13 to nine and then down to 6 MPa while maintaining a constant temperature of 55 degrees Celsius. The gradual decrease in pressure will increase the amount of CO2 captured and reduce the risk of flash reaction due to the density and the gravitational pull of the gaseous CO2 and the essential oil extract. The recaptured CO2 will be sent through a filter and then combined with a fresh stream being pumped from an industrial site located 22 miles away in Portland, Oregon, before entering an accumulator. The accumulator tank will hold the CO2 at liquid state by maintaining a pressure of 100 bars and a temperature of 5 degrees Celsius before being pumped into the extractor once more. Once the CO2 is recovered from the extract, the crude oil is pumped into the winterization system. Winterization is the process of dissolving the extract, a nonpolar substance, in a polar liquid at low temperatures. To assist with polarity, the liquid used for our process is 190 proof ethanol. 
Using ethanol with 5% water reduces raw materials costs, increases the polarity of the liquid, and maintains low winterization temperatures, all of which are sought after for optimal efficiency in the winterization process. The crude extract is made up of oil and lipids in an unknown ratio. The lipids present in hemp extract are known as waxes and are made up of long chain fatty acids with an attached alcohol group. To separate the wax from the oil, the extract is mixed with the chilled ethanol. Ethanol is introduced into the system at a ratio of 10 to 1 with the crude extract and the wax is solidified in three series vessels. Each of the vessels has an overflow pipeline recycling back into the system to assist with continuous flow as the waxes solidify. The time needed for ethanol to solidify the wax depends entirely on the temperature used for winterization and the amount to winterize. Negative 20 degrees C is when wax begins precipitating out of the extract, but negative 80 degrees C is what is used for our system, which decreases the time needed for the waxes to precipitate, an estimated 12 to 24 hours. After all of the wax is precipitated out of solution, the extract undergoes an N2 pressure filter to separate the waxes from the oil. The filter is horizontal, allowing for the greatest cross-sectional surface area for filtration. After filtration, the ethanol used to flocculate the waxes and dilute the oil is removed by a heat exchanger. Ethanol evaporates at 78.2 degrees Celsius, while cannabidiol, the hemp essential compound, starts to degrade between temperatures of 160 and 180 degrees Celsius. The low freezing point made ethanol the best choice for winterization solvent, and the large vaporization temperature difference between it and cannabidiol is useful in minimizing the risk of essential oil compound degradation. The evaporated ethanol is pumped through a filter to, to remove any unwanted properties before being recycled back into the winterization system. The last step in making hemp essential oils is short path white thin film distillation. At this point in the process, the oil is very dark, brown, and sticky at room temperature, so it's heated to be pumped into the main evaporator chamber in the distillation column. The chamber consists of three main elements, the evaporator, the wiper, and the condenser. There's a couple of things going on in the system. First, the oil enters the continuously heated evaporator where slotted wiper blades wipe a thin film of oil on the walls and force it down the chamber with the help of gravity. The oil is continuously heated by an internal condenser at the center of the chamber at about 7 degrees C, 58 degrees Fahrenheit, and is in close proximity to the walls. The positioning of the condenser is what allows the vapor molecules from the oil to travel a short distance between the heated walls and the condenser surface. All other non-evaporated fluids from the hemp oil will flow out of the bottom of the system continuously as two products, the residue and the distillate phase. The distillate phase is the final hemp essential oil product, while the residue contains byproducts and other impurities. A mechanical roughing pump and a diffusion pump operate the system as a vacuum. This means that the system's pressure is so low we can assume that any additional particles in the distillation chamber cannot affect the overall distillation process. It also means that the boiling point temperature of the oil is reduced, which makes it easier to ensure that beneficial compounds aren't ruined or overheated out of the final product. But wait, is it safe? Our team cares about the quality of the product and the safety of operators, staff, and the community members of the City of Aurora. To provide transparency, our team has provided public access to the Hazard and Operability Study HAZOP analysis and detailed piping and instrumentation design, also known as P&ID, for the extraction section. We took into consideration the possible safety concerns that occurred during the extraction operation and then created a detailed P&ID. The extraction vessel will be composed of stainless steel walls that have a thickness of inches to properly handle the pressure of the system. I bet you're wondering what we plan to do with all the hemp biomass waste. Hempcrete. This insulation material is a mixture of hemp herd lime binder, and water. Hempcrete is breathable, water resistant, and does not require the use of a vapor barrier and rain screen system. It's a greener alternative to the commonly used fiberglass insulation. Now that we know how the process works, let's look at how we plan to make this process a reality. How much is it going to cost to make a plant like this? Well, 
Our expenses are broken up into five categories. Raw material, utilities, capital, labor, and sales. Raw material consists of things like our hemp plant, our solvents like CO2 and ethanol. Our utilities include the gas required to heat up our decarboxylation chamber, heating and cooling our solvents. Capital includes all the necessary equipment we need to run our process, whether it be the extraction vessel or the distillation column, or the supporting equipment like pumps, compressors, and valves. Labor includes paying fair wages and ensuring our operators and staff. The sales-related costs, general expenditures that we'll be using to be operating our plant on a year-to-year -year basis. While considering all these expenses, the team has determined it will cost $120 million to build a plant that will enable the extraction of 10,000 pounds of hemp biomass each day. Once the number crunching is done, the product can be sold at $10 per gram, which is 50% lower than competitors. Large-scale production of hemp essential oils provides the community with support during times of great emotional and psychological distress, economic instability, and uncertainty by creating a malleable market that has the potential for economic expansion opportunities. We believe that a large-scale production of hemp essential oils can serve as a remedy to heal our community. Just keep information. 